Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm fine. What good can be in captivity? They feed us. It's clear. We have a place to sleep. Everything is fine. It's my opinion. What did you expect? They said that if you were captured, your genitals and ears would be cut off. We're not going to show it. Are your genitals in place? I am fine. Is it good or bad? This is good. Let's talk in order. Introduce yourselves. You're Leo Samrat Salavatovich, born in 2002. Repeat your name, please. Samrat. Say your last name again for our viewers. E R T L E U O V. We've contacted your parents, they're expecting a call. State your date of birth. June 29, 2002. What is your city of birth? Orenburg region, Aletsky district, Buranoi village. I got it. Do you agree to the publication of this conversation? Yes. Do you understand the implications of this publication? Yes. Name the consequences. After returning home, I will be asked about it. Interesting. FSB. Your FSB? I guess. What will they ask? They'll ask why I recorded the video. What do you say? Mm. I had to do it to get in touch with my parents. Who do you owe it to? I don't owe you anything, I have to reassure my parents. They are already old people, I spoke to them before I disappeared. They would be very worried. My mom has a weak heart. Who just came in here? Who did I have quick interviews with? Those who refused. Tell us who the refuseniks are. Who are these people? We are now changing the concept of our dialogues. Look at the camera, it's a smashed Samsung phone. This is the prisoner who sees now that my phone is broken. What's broken there? Main camera. The main camera on my Samsung phone is broken. I'm not implying that, but something like that. Tell us what's going on. The refuseniks are those who don't want to record the video and put the conversation online, and those who don't want to contact their relatives. I don't know if they want to contact their families. How long did it take for someone like that to get in and out? A minute and a half. Yes. It goes as follows. So, we asked all the refuseniks who didn't want to be on the YouTube channel to gather and quickly introduce themselves, I asked permission to record a video, and they refused in front of the camera. Then they left. We make similar videos for the Red Cross on the violation of prisoners of war rights. Am I violating your rights now? No. Why do you think so? Because I decided to record this video myself and gave voluntary consent for my video to be published on YouTube. What is your education? How old are you? I am 20 years old. 20. What education do you have? I graduated from nine grades in college. What was your major? I'm a crane operator by training. Were you an enlisted man? Yes. When? I served from the 8th of July, 2021st year to 2022nd year. When were you discharged? In the summer? Yeah, in the summer. At that time, the war had already begun. The war has already begun. What unit did you serve in? A part of the VKS in Krasnodar Krai, the town of Primorsko Aktarsk. You've been to space? No. Why is it called the VCS? To make it sound better? Maybe. I don't know. Let us try to answer that question. The Space Force is an aviation unit. I understand. 960th Assault Headquarters. Flying into space? No. Then why use a name like that? 
it probably sounds cooler. I guess. And in fact? In fact, this is not true. Did your planes take part in the fighting? Yes, we participated. Shot down? Yes. How many pieces? Two Su-25 attack aircraft were shot down in my presence. How many were there? A lot of things were classified. I don't know the exact number. I saw about 10 Su-25 attack aircraft. That's my estimate. The Su-25 is an old airplane. And there were two blue-colored Su-34s. What were you told about the downed planes? Our planes flew in pairs. Two pairs flew out, and from each pair only one plane returned from the mission. When was that? That was around April. That was the period when we started shooting them down en masse. We started grounding the Space Force. What did your unit tell you? We weren't told anything about it. Maybe you heard something? I was wondering what happened in there. Before my demobilization? Yes. Your military shot down another of our Su-25s. Just before my demobilization, one search party left, they went to the collision line. Have they been liquidated, too? They searched for the pilot but never found him. They hit a mine, their car broke down and they were evacuated by helicopter as a matter of urgency. We recorded one interview with a rescuer who flew in a helicopter to rescue an Su-25 pilot, and they were also shot down. These rescuers were captured by us. We had people like that as well. It is a confirmation that airplanes are shot down, they go down, and people are captured. What unit did you fight in while in Ukraine? When did you arrive here? January 27th. I see. How long have you been preparing for this? I was in a tent city for three months. Did you dig? Trenches. I understand. And you only fired five shots. Four times. I didn't guess. So, in what direction have you arrived? Donetsk direction, this is Pervomes and the village of Nevelsh. You've been there since January 27th? No, on January 27th we crossed the Ukrainian border and ended up in the town of Shakhtarsk, near Davidovka, I don't know how to put the accent correctly. We stayed there for 12 or 13 days, and in February we were urgently put into buses, into Kamaz trucks and brought to Donetsk. In Donetsk there was the first division into companies, we were sent to the DNR army. My platoon became part of the 110th Rifle Brigade, 2nd Rifle Battalion and 4th Rifle Company, and three weeks of training began. We practiced capturing and defending trenches. You could say we were playing war. What did you do in February? What I told you was in February. Has this been going on all month? This was before the 25th or 24th of February. What happened next? Then our 5th company went on the offensive. Are you cold? No. My hands are shaking from the concussion. You're concussed. Does smoking cure concussion? Yes. <laughs> it's fine. The fifth company suffered heavy losses, there were wounded. 
How many? Twelve people were injured. That's not much. How many were killed? There were two people killed. It's a small loss. It's the loss of one company per hour. Our company was engaged in evacuation at that time. We took the wounded and evacuated them. Then there was a lull, we were in positions. There was another group of our company there. They sat in positions for about 10 days. Is it March already? Then we replaced these military men. When we replaced the guys, the assault began and we were captured. Describe the last day in more detail. On what date were you taken prisoner? The 14th. Tell us about your last day as part of the occupation forces. He didn't tense up, meaning he agrees that their troops are occupation troops. It was night, we were on duty two by two and we were looking through the thermal imager. We were sentries, you could say. We made sure that no one passed by us. There was a wooded area to the left and right and we were in a wooded area. Yes. And in the morning, around 5.30, three drones flew over us. Yes. I saw that one was with eggs, that is, with grenades. Nobody ever called grenades that. They came to wake you up so you wouldn't fall asleep. They must have come every morning. It was a first for me. There you go. What do you think of this experience? It's not a good experience. Yes. The drone dropped the first grenade and drove us into the dugout. We ran into the dugout. Then the drone dropped two more grenades, a third, a fourth, and there was a crush. At that moment, our men were already running toward you. Yes. We don't bring drones to our military for nothing. We're bringing drones to our soldiers. They approached us and started shooting and throwing grenades at us. Please don't cover your face, the camera's in there. They threw grenades at us. That's it. They threw grenades at us. Our group commander told us to throw a grenade under ourselves. We didn't understand what he said. What does that mean? He meant we should blow ourselves up. We thought about it later, after he blew himself up. Tell me more about it. We were sitting in a foxhole. I got it. There were three of us, and grenades were thrown at us. Fortunately, the burrow was good, well dug. Two men were in another foxhole, and the group commander was in a separate third foxhole. Yes. There were about 20 explosions. Then there was a lull, then a smoke bomb was thrown, and we covered the hole in the foxhole with a sleeping bag. We heard a prolonged scream and then an explosion. What's the commander's last name? I don't know. Call sign? Hedgehog. Where did he come from? I don't know. This information is essential for the Red Cross because they use our interviews to identify those who undermine themselves or die. The Russian army is so organized that they don't know first and last names, only call signs. What can you tell us about Hedgehog? What was his specialty? Who was he? He was not as a commander, but as an SPG-9 gunner. Yes. 
like this. There weren't enough people. Is there anything you can say about him that will get him recognized? What's his profession? I didn't communicate with him. The hedgehog is gone. He won't pick apples anymore. There was no need to come to Ukraine. Vorobyov was also mobilized. He is from Orenburg. His call sign is Vorobey. He was hit by shrapnel, bled to death and also died. Call sign Sparrow, surname Vorobyov. Where did he come from? Orenburg. From Orenburg. Orenburg region. Vorobia from the Orenburg region died. He's from the town of Novogorsk. He's dead. That's a good thing. Is that good or bad? That's not good. Why? He's an occupier. He came to a foreign land. Tell me, what did Vorobia fight and die for? Let's answer this question together. Why did Hedgehog and Sparrow die many kilometers away from their home? He died for his country. This is your homeland? No. He was drafted. I understand. <clears throat> As a result of being drafted into the service, he died. What did he die for? I don't know. Why don't you know? You were ready to die, too. You fought, and you could have been killed. I didn't realize it until I was in that dugout when they were pelting us with grenades. Then the voice of an assault team was heard from the street. They said to come out one by one and surrender. In Russian? Yes. I'm shocked. The first to come out was Keith, then me, then Husky and behind us Dare. We surrendered. You didn't surrender, you were captured. This is a fundamental difference, because half of them do not understand the difference between surrendering and being captured. We were captured. How many of our soldiers were there? About 15 people. Great. Then they stormed two positions in parallel. That's what I think. Was the assault successful? Yeah. When we got out, they tied us up and took us into the trench. And then our drone arrived and your military started shooting at it. Looks like they were successful. Shot down? No, he flew away. Then, urgently, the two from the assault team stayed behind and waited for the infantry to gain a foothold on the point. Yes. They took us to the Ukrainian positions, took us to a safe place. There they untied us, they gave us water and smoked cigarettes. Nazis. I have already realized that what we have been told about Ukrainians is not true. You have been deceived once again. When you were mobilized, were you told that you would not be on the front line, that you would be guarding the border, or what were you told? We were told we would be defensive on the border. It turns out that your country deceives you in all matters? Then you were taken prisoner. The Red Cross says that experiments were conducted on you, some kind of research. They didn't do research, there was an interrogation. Interrogation is logical. It's what our scouts are supposed to do. The next thing you know, you've been captured. Yeah, in three days. It doesn't matter. I can see that you're alive and well. 
How did your mother react to you going off to war? Badly. What did she say? She wanted to take me abroad. Why didn't she do it? I'm already listed, so they won't let me through at the border anyway. Do you have a passport? No. You cannot travel to Kazakhstan with an internal passport. Will you call mom? No, I better text her. And now she'll start worrying and crying and have heart problems. I'm really worried about my mom. Let's turn on the voicemails again. Son, dad and Miha are at home, waiting for you. Son, won't it hurt you? We are waiting for your exchange, just like those children who are serving in Ukraine. We want to exchange these children and you. She's not crying, they're waiting for your call, but the choice is yours. You can send a voice message. I'll send a message. I'd recommend you call. Because you told her you'd call her. I'll record a voicemail. Mom, I decided not to call so you wouldn't worry or cry. But I'll have a connection later. Dimitri is giving me that opportunity. We'll communicate through him. I'm fine, don't worry, it's human conditions here, everything is fine, my health is fine too. I am waiting to be added to the exchange lists and return to you, my family. Mira must be all grown up now. I love you all very much and miss you all. You don't worry too much. Say hello to daddy and don't let him worry too much. And as for my passport, military ID and cell phone, I hope you took everything away so that you wouldn't lose anything. You will inform the military enlistment office or the governor to exchange us, the Orenburg boys who are now in military captivity, as soon as possible. You do not say who is with you in captivity. Tell your mom not to call this number. Mom, do not call here, and when you have the opportunity, then write here. Let the sister and everyone else write voice messages from your number, and I will listen to them and I will answer during the communication sessions. I love you all. This is Dimitri speaking. When the interview comes out, you will go with this video to the military enlistment office and show that your son is alive. He really doesn't want to call you so he won't worry you. Watch the interview on the Vladimir Zolkin channel and you will understand why he does not want to call. This is his decision. On YouTube. Yes, on YouTube. Red Cross, 2023. The POW sent a voice message to his relatives, it has been delivered and read, the relatives are now listening to the message. And that's it. You are welcome to come to any of our colonies, just as before. You will not come to our institutions, but will come to where our prisoners of war are kept, and let them transmit voice messages to their homeland that they are alive and well. Is what we're doing bad? No, that's good. You give the opportunity to contact family. We have a different goal in mind. Our goal is not to give you the opportunity to talk to your family and put them at ease. Make no mistake. You form an exchange fund. 
we show that you are alive, and your people start making noise, and your military is fueled by this. The result is an exchange process. We think it helps. At least they say so. Here's how it goes. By tradition, our prisoners of war address their compatriots. If you want, you can say something. For example, do they need to go here? We must somehow avoid mobilization by law. This is the wrong war. It is wrong to take life from each other. It is not right. Thank you. Why did you want to call home? Mom has a heart condition. Can a person be exchanged after the call? You won't call. Why? Because your whole country is like that. You are afraid of everything. Of the five or six hundred prisoners of war, only one or two made contact. I don't know what they are doing to you there. Maybe. What are you doing? Smoke already. Maybe? The Federal Security Service is probably involved in the case. Your mom sent a voice message. The Federal Security Service should work for the people, not against the people. I think they will know too. You won't call either. Samrat, I'm very glad to hear from you. You are strong, we believe in you, we have no doubt in you that you do not lose heart. We are waiting for you at home and are doing our best to exchange you as soon as possible. We are told that you are already listed for the exchange and that you will attend the next exchange and return home soon. Your father took your passport, phone and military ID. All things are with us. Dimitri, thank you for the opportunity to contact my brother. Can I take your number and write to you so that later I can have a connection from my phone number, because my mother and I live separately. I will wait for the interview. Samrat, I'm waiting for you at home. I can't breathe without you, I feel very bad, I love you very much. May I answer? Not now. Will you answer for the phone number? Yes. Yes, save my phone number. When you write, then indicate his last name and write that you are a sister so that I can save the number. Thank you, Dimitri. Read history. I will read. There you will find a lot of interesting things. I did not strongly believe in God, in Allah. Muslim? Yes. I believe now. Why does faith only come when things are bad? What is shown? Russian ship. This is the cruiser Moskva, your flagship, which was sunk. We are told that they smoked in the wrong place on the ship and there was a fire. It was a fire at sea. Now advertise new drones. These are not drones, but something like surface copters carrying a warhead. Our? Yes. Maybe. This is a cool innovation. 
Unfortunately, you prisoners watch the news more than I do. I only read news on Telegram. Stop smoking.